Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Real Time with Dr. Stacy. Again, so excited and happy to be here and to have all of you logging on. I know it's going to take a little bit for people to tour out from their long day at work, um, the rough roads today because of all the rains and flooding. I'm hoping that none of you had any major damage or major issue because of the rain, but we are here to at least take control of one part of our lives, especially those of us who are diabetic and or who have family members or relatives who are diabetic. And I'm happy on our second episode to welcome to us all our expert guest this evening, Miss Tracy Jackson Brisbane, who is our dietitian who will be on call with us for the next hour or so. And again, one of the reasons why we've gone through this journey, where or we are going through this journey together, is that we have approximately 200,000 persons living with diabetes in Trinidad and Tobago. We have so many persons who are becoming blind, who are losing limbs, who are having strokes, who are having kidney problems, skin problems, all because of diabetes. And we are using this forum as a means for us to take better control of the diabetes and to prevent it where we can. And we hope that you'll be able to share this information because sometimes the reality is when we go to our doctor's office, there are so many patients, there are so many of us there that we don't get all the answers we require that we need. So we're using this forum of real time with Dr. Stacy to start this journey to wellness. And again, we have with us today our resident dietitian, Tracy Jackson Brisbane. And let me tell you a little bit about Tracy before she says a bit more of herself. Tracy has been a registered dietitian for the past 10 years. She worked initially as a dietetic technician for 10 years before. So it augured well for her just to, to progress even more. She has uh, done a lot of work in corporate wellness um, for companies for over a decade as well, working for PCS Nitrogen, BHP, and Petrogen as well. And at Petrogen, she was responsible for the care of inpatients and outpatients in charge of their wellness needs, and of course, anything regarding food service management. She's currently employed at a private hospital where she is the registered dietitian and food service manager. She possesses a certificate from Arthur Lockjack in HSC for the food industry and a master's of science in food safety and quality assurance. I promise you guys that our guests are well-trained. I didn't just grab them from anywhere. And they're not only book smart, but they have a vested interest in the wellness of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. So I'd like to welcome Miss Tracy Jackson of Brisbane. Thanks, Tracy, for being here. Thanks for having me. Oh, gosh. Just, just tell us why. Why dietetics? I mean, yes, you started as a dietetic technician, but what's encourage you to to become a dietitian and to stay in this in this field which, and a field where i think a lot of us still are unsure of what you really do the difference between you and a nutritionist sometimes i hear right. people say well when i retire to shine the gamma sheet tell us more about <laughs> who you are and what you do right so i worked as a dietetic technician for about 10 years at eric williams and i found that i wasn't as effective as i I needed to be, you know, to make an impact into the lives of my patients. It was more to assist the dietitian at that stage of the game. And I was like, you know what, I could do this. So I decided to go back and do the internship and to practice. And the practice itself was the one year internship was intense, but it made a big difference because I got to see what I learned in school applied, right? Yes. So um, I love the feel of dietetics. I love food. I mean, food is life. My girlfriend and I joke about it. Food, food is life. life. <laughs> At the end of the day, food is something that should be enjoyed. It's not just supposed to provide nutrition, but it's something that you should enjoy eating. Yeah? So yeah. The, 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 the love I have for food led to my love for food and my love for science <laughs> led me into 
um, the perfect balance of being a, a, a dietitian, yeah? Because I get to apply the science and my love all at the same time. And as you rightfully said, Trinidad and Tobago is my home. I love my country. And, you know, making an impact into the lives of everyone, you know, not just yep. um, as it relates to diseases, but making an impact, teaching, um, showing persons how to do something a little better. You know, that's what dietetics yep. is about. And the, 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 the part that most people don't understand is that a nutritionist is somebody who would have just done a little two-week course on the internet and they call themselves yep. a nutritionist. As a dietitian, you must have um, level of accreditation. So in Trinidad, you must register with the Board of Professions related to medicine. You must have a one-year yeah. internship. You must have a, a bachelor's degree. And I think in a few years, you must have a master's degree. A master's. And to renew, to, to have your quote-unquote license renewed on a yearly basis, you must show 15 ongoing credits of work. So... Yes. Nutritionist and a dietitian, there is a big difference. Yeah? There's a big difference. And I mean, you all are the experts in the science yes. of food. Yes. Yeah, it's not just the about what we food. see in front of us. It's the, in, the innate nature of food and what is best for us with all our conditions. Yes. 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 So before yes. we continue, I just want to say a special good night to Oma Singh. Um, Oma has been one of our viewers from the last episode who tuned in has tuned in now i think the first person to tune in this evening so hi omar thanks for tuning in and hi, i know you'll be sharing this to anybody yeah she's been really good and thanks to her um for that because she's one of the people who have seen the value of this sort of interaction and she was really looking forward to, to hearing you and uh another comment i'm saying hi Stephen. um one of my friend's brother, he's on as well. And just as a reminder to all our viewers, um, I'm, I'm going to have a little surprise later on. I'm not going to say what it is, but we ask you to, this is the opportunity to ask your question. You have an expert involved in food service management in the science of food for almost 20 years. Do not let this opportunity go past. All right, you, you're you not sure when you're going to have a one-on-one -on -one with a dietitian anytime soon for, for an hour, all right, especially with COVID-19. So ask your questions. There's no stupid question because this is the time to get the right answers and the answers that have evidence behind it. So, um, Tracy, I'm going to just put on our presentation on the screen. And to our viewers out there, please remember that you can share this live on your own Facebook pages and you can put your questions on the comments um, on the comments and we'll show it on our screen and answer what we can and just give us all the feedback so that we can try to help you become healthier and to live healthier lives. A special thanks before we begin from the Diabetes Association of Trinidad and Tobago for also tuning in and for sharing the live. So Tracy, I pass it over to you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Now, one of the things that I'm asked constantly um, within my practice is, what are carbs? How do I eat carbs? Because carbohydrates are the only foods that generate an insulin response. So tonight, we are going to learn about carbohydrates, how we eat them, what are the best kinds of carbohydrates and how we go about figuring out what is most applicable to us. So the first thing I'll ask is what are this. carbohydrates? I can't wait for this. <laughs> carbohydrates are a group of foods that your body actually prefers as its first source of energy. Yeah? The two types of carbohydrates. We have complex carbs and we have simple carbs. I want you to keep this slide Memorize this for me. Remember this. One teaspoon is equal to four grams of sugar. It's going to come back later on. Remember, one teaspoon is equal to four grams of sugar. Lovely. So what are the refined or the simple carbohydrates? The simple carbs are those that contain very little to no fiber. Once the fiber is removed, you would find that 
um, the, that particular food is going to affect your blood sugar negatively. Yeah? What are refined carbohydrates? You will see things that you may love on this list. Sweet biscuits. Well, sweet biscuits can be Ovaltine. Milo biscuits, Devon biscuits, biscuits with cream, biscuits without cream, biscuits with sugar, biscuits with sprinkles, all biscuits. Pastry. We go to the pastry shop and we love the pastry with all the goo in the middle, the white stuff, the yellow stuff, the pink stuff, the red stuff. They are all considered simple carbs. Cakes, cookies, sodas. I made sure and added our Trinidadian um, sodas, for the lack of a better term, which would be Malta, Shandy, Ginseng, Airdrax, Christmas is coming, Christmas Ginger coming. Beer. Yes. Ginger beer, yeah, and throwing a little punch de creme here also. Chocolate, sweetened fruit drinks. I, I put Caribbean cool, and you have many others. You have Trinidad Fresh, you have Orchard, right? Chocolate, any form of chocolate. It could be chocolate cake. It could be chocolate to eat. Any form of chocolate. Chocolate mix for your drink. And, of course, sodas. Coca Cola, Apple J, here drugs again, Sprite, all the things we like to when we come home from work, we want to reward ourselves with a glass. And my diabetics try to convince me that no, 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 I'm only using half. And I'm going <laughs> to top it up with water. It does not change the fact that it is still a simple carbohydrate. Water in a dung make you feel better but it will still affect your blood sugar yeah good so you see all the juicy carbs there right so can i ask can i ask a question sure. as you mentioned flour I, one of my 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 relatives is on a health binge so she's using a lot of different flowers now she's not using the white flour she's using coconut flour quinoa flour are, are there uh, is there a difference using this sort of flour, or they're still considered simple, simple carbs. It has to do with the amount of fiber in it. Mm -hmm. So the quinoa, the coconut, there is more fiber in it than um, white flour. But, and I stress the but, it does not give us permission to mash up the dance. Yes. Yeah? Because what happens is we find that, oh, no, we're using different flour. We're not using um, whole white flour. So the slice of bread a little thicker. Um, yeah. I eat a little more often. Right? Because, no, this is healthy. So, again, it has to do with finding the balance. So it's okay. Wow. It's okay. But we can't reward ourselves with more because we think it's healthy. And that's yeah. one of the problems that I generally run into. Yes. Thank you. Yeah? Good. So what is the issue with simple carbohydrates? They are short chains of sugar. The shorter the chain, the easier it is to be broken up. Therefore, it enters your bloodstream quickly. It keeps the blood sugar high for too long. So when something should be um, dealt with in the body in three hours, six hours after, yeah. you're still reaping the benefits of the Coca-Cola that you would have drunk. Yeah? It does not promote satiety and high in high amounts. So you drink Coca-Cola mm -hmm. now, and chances are you are going to be hungry 20 minutes after. Yes. But calorie-wise, you would have drank close to 200 to 300 calories. That could be a full meal. Yeah? So it does mm. not provide you with that full feeling. Yeah? And it does not contain much nutrients. You might get a little phosphoric acid, but I'm sure you're not getting some vitamin C. Yeah? Good. It promotes insulin resistance. It turns mm -hmm. off the appetite control mechanism. So you don't ever feel full. Why? Because you just keep drinking and eating and drinking and eating. And it increases the appetite for even more sugar. Sugar loves sugar. And sugar yeah. taken in over a period of time weakens the immune system for a, a period of time right after. So you know at times we have the children in school who just don't seem to get better. You have the flu today, you have the flu tomorrow, you have the flu yes. two weeks after. Right. 
And then when you check the diet, it's because juice. Let me, let me make a statement here. There is no biological need for anyone to drink juice. I'll say it again. There is no biological need for anybody to drink juice. Tracy, you're hurting some of us here. I like my apple juice. Yes. I must <laughs> hurt you. I have to hurt you. <laughs> I have to. Juice is, I love to call juice human vice. Fruit without fiber is juice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we take the hard work out of it. The sucking the orange, the opening it up, the peeling out the white. You sit down and you chew it. And we can just do the easy way and drink the juice. Yeah? Good. So the kind of carbs I actually want you to have would be complex carbs. Now, we trainees love provision. And that's a good thing. You just need to love it with a little more sense. Yeah? <laughs> good. So complex carbs are long chains of glucose units. They're higher in fiber. So therefore, they release the sugar over a four to six hour period, which is what you actually want. So these complex carbs don't flood the blood system with sugar immediately. Like if you drink Coca-Cola, there's no chewing, there's no nothing. So it enters your bloodstream very quickly, right? One thing I should mention as a simple carb, alcohol will also fall into your simple carbohydrate group, yeah? Because again, the speed at which it enters the bloodstream is where the issue comes in, right? Provision takes a little while longer. I'll give you a story. Remember back in the day when you go by granny and granny cook, machine and saltfish, and you eat that at 12, and your next meal is 5 o'clock the evening because most likely you're to sleep and get up and be okay. And that has to do with the amount of fiber that is in it. Yeah. And as a diabetic, that is what you actually want sugar being released over a period of time as opposed to in flooding your bloodstream immediately. So when we prick your finger, we are checking to see all the sugar for the lack of a better term that did not get in. Yeah? Good. Tracy, repeat that, repeat that for, for the listeners. Repeat what happens when right. you when we, when we prick carbs. your finger, when we prick your finger to take your blood sugar levels, whether it be fasting or random sugar, we check in to see all that did not get in. Yes. So ideally, after a meal, we want it to be less than 180 milligrams per deciliter and fasting 70 to 110 in the morning. Yes. Good. When it's 70 to 110 in the morning, it means that you have better control of that day. And you start off at 140 first thing in the morning, nothing you really do is going to make a difference. So the lower you begin, the better off that day. Yes, the control you'll have for that day. That day belongs to you. Yeah? Yes. Good. Right. So complex carbs, it satisfies your appetite. Again, it's high in fiber. And this is important. It's rich in minerals, antioxidants, and phytochemicals. We just came out of... Um, breast cancer wear month and phytochemicals and antioxidants are one of the major things we major way sorry we use to boost your immune system and in this time of covid right we need our immune system to be functioning on as high as it can be in an effort to battle the things that we are accustomed dealing with yeah mm -hmm. it also reduces the risk of disease because of the amount of fiber Good. What should I eat? Yes, I, I, I need to this. And, and viewers, listen, this is a learning experience for all of us. I'm in health and I am taking notes. Notes because there's something for us to learn here. And for us, all of us, the best of us fall into bad habits. So yes. this is the opportunity. And don't forget, ask your questions. One or two people have emailed me, but feel free to ask online right here through the pages we're gonna have a giveaway tracy they didn't know nice. that but let me tell them let me tell them now and one of my friends she um runs the kitchen garden and this is their contact number on the screen 
8625 and they have sponsored a variety veggie bag for this right. um this evening's event so after this all the persons who ask questions their names will be going into our bag and i'm going to select one so this variety veggie bag consists of tomatoes cucumbers melon gen potatoes pumpkin nice. cabbage body celery side shadow benny pimentos hot peppers carrots sweet peppers lettuce okros so if you want to have a chance you gotta play so <laughs> i'm looking out for the comments and again, this gift is courtesy the Kitchen Garden, 293-8625. So Tracy is going to talk about what should we eat. Remember, we spoke about that in the first episode, and we said, you know, we're looking forward to this one to, to get the information. What do we eat? I'm not going to tell Tracy what I had today. I'll get a little buff on, <laughs> online, on air. But um, <laughs> let's see where we go if I could confess to her today. Thanks, Tracy. No problem. No, everybody asks me, tell me what is a good diet? Tell me what is a good meal for the day? Now, what you see on your screen here is a balance. It is all six food groups included in the entire day. Good? So, local. We always eat local. I shouldn't even put Medellin or orange. I should have put a pom city. A good <laughs> starch mango. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a handful of dongs some series good yes. so ideally for breakfast we want whole wheat sada and i say whole wheat sada you can put other greens in it and make it a whole green sada right. whole green would be you train a little flax a little chai seed uh, uh, right. uh, uh, um, a little cornmeal and you make it a multi-grain sada right. with, these, with yeah. tomatoes and salt fish so you're going to get your vegetable and you're going to get your food from animal your protein source Good breakfast. You, if you want to, you could include a serving of milk there. If it is you want to have a glass, of, a, a cup of coffee or, right. or some tea, you will not see a tablespoon of sugar added to a cup of tea. No. Let me say this part. So we trainees, right, don't consider condensed milk to be sugar. <laughs> Let me bring the news to you, ladies and gentlemen. It is. So, go come by the dietitian and say, no, 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 no. I don't use sugar in my tea at all. But you use condensed milk. Six or one, half, half a dozen, a dozen next. next. Yeah? Good. It's the same thing. Nice? Come like you're saying, reverse back. Same thing. <laughs> and nice. Wonderful. Mid AM, you should have a serving of fruit. No. Yeah. Why I put orange there? There's some fruit that um, tends to have a little more sugar than others. So we have yeah. the fruit that tends to be on the fibrous side, and the other fruit that tends to be um, on the sweeter side. Perfect example yeah. an apple and a banana. Right? No. One whole banana is actually two servings of fruit. So one banana wow. is equivalent to two apples. Yes, wow. sugar for sugar. Yes. So and, and somebody asked as you're having... talking about fruit, as you're talking about fruit, sorry, um mm -hmm. Trace. As you're talking about fruit, somebody yes. emailed and said the fruits are healthy. Why does my sugar go up every mango season? <laughs> right. So let me let me I, I'm glad you raised that question. So let me tell you something. There is a difference between something being healthy and something being nutritious. Yes. Healthy has to do with um, what is the name to the product? So whatever it is. So fruit healthy, you get some vitamins, you get some minerals, right? You get some fiber. Fruit as a meal is not nutritious. Fruit yes. as a snack is. Perfect example. You can't yes. as a diabetic. You shouldn't start your day off, right? With a whole banana and you move on. No. Balance. Even if you eat the banana and you boil an egg, Yes. It is carbohydrate and protein, you get a meal. Yeah. But standalone, as a meal, fruit is not the best thing because it's not nutritious. It's healthy, but it's not nutritious. Nutrition has to do with context. Nutrition has to do with asking particular questions. What fruit you're eating? How you're eating the fruit? What else you're eating the fruit with? When you're eating yeah. the fruit? Yeah? So 
you eat fruit first thing in the morning your sugar high yes. you eat a, a a handful of something about 10 a.m and your sugar is okay why it takes about two to three hours for your food to digest so if you have breakfast at six the, your mid-morning should be about 9 30 10 o'clock right you have your banana and lunch should be about one the three hour mark would have passed yes. yeah so it's a matter of when you eat the fruit yes mid-morning mid-afternoon mid-morning mid-afternoon two words you will always hear me say frequency and amount how much yes. how often how much how often how often context nutrition has to do yes. with context good excellent nice so lunchtime a little cassava a little provision some red beans big chicken and a salad you would have gotten complex carbohydrates in your cassava your red beans a nice big salad and a good source of protein in your big chicken you realize again there is no juice <laughs> nice good mid-afternoon a handful of nuts now we trainees have a very poor relationship with nuts very poor we have different handfuls in trinidad we have this one <laughs> That's the one I this like. One. Yeah, everybody like this one. We have this one. I'm talking about this one. And it can't have nuts people on the top, the side, or the bottom. How much ever nuts can fit in your, your hand on a snug handful, a snug, um, snug fist, that is the amount of nuts you're supposed to eat. <laughs> seven almonds is a serving of nuts. Wow. I'll repeat. Seven almonds is a seven of nuts. Again, I'm hearing person saying, what was she talking about? That not healthy. Mm -hmm. But is eating a pack of nuts nutritious? Frequency or amount? Yeah? <laughs> this, 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 this is Handful. This is excellent for me, but yeah. Because the true Handful. way of calling is not this, it's this. So a lot of habits, a lot of habits set things and behavioral changes, we will say, that we have to make. Yes. Yes. One thing I, I tell a, a lot of my patients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. The one thing I tell a lot of my patients that have particular foods, I will tell you, don't buy and leave it home. Yeah. You will buy nuts and that nuts will call you in the night about 10 o'clock when you're watching a movie yes. it will call you by name you will hear stacy <laughs> stacy i am stacy right and i guarantee you you will watch that movie and done the whole bottle of nuts mm -hmm. oh, no. mm -hmm. yes <laughs> nuts is one of those foods if you want it go out the road and buy it chances are Jumping in your car, bumping your starter, and driving out the road, mm, you ain't gonna want it that much. Right. Good? Mm -hmm. If it is you have to eat nuts, always buy a small pack. Yes. Always. Always. Why? Because handful is the serving. Good? Nice. Got you. Mm -hmm. Dinner time, you want to keep it. Now, I tell my patients, Culturally, how we eat breakfast will either look like dinner, will either look like breakfast, or it will look like lunch. We will go um, bread and cereal for dinner, or we'll do a little, little we'll do lunch again, but a smaller amount. Mm. Yeah? So I just train the bran flakes, the reasons, bran and reasons, and a little, little low fat milk before you go to bed at dinner time. Yeah? You drink your water, and your day is done. Yes. Somebody yeah. has a, a love, uh, interesting question as you as you mentioned the breakfast, the mid a.m. straight down mm -hmm. to dinner. And I want to put I want to put it up on the screen for all our viewers. Mm -hmm. So Dogla Palm is asking, what do you suggest for someone who works shift 
and we're working at night shift and let's say about 2 a.m you're hungry what do you suggest they eat because a lot of we know shift workers always have a little right. difficulty in managing yes. diets especially in mm -hmm. in locations where they don't even have access to a canteen that's 24 7 that could provide right. nutritious meals what would you suggest right um once it have a microwave you're safe you walk yes. with some powdered milk some oats some dried fruit yes. and you have some cereal 2 a.m in the morning yes. see the thing is when you do cereal that hour the fiber is the thing that is going to keep you the yes. complex carbohydrates is going to keep you as opposed to going royal castle yeah okay I pam, pam yeah. i hope i hope you follow that and everybody else because i know there are a few people on this call who work um the friendships so sure. just yeah. repeat repeat that advice again Tracy. once you have a microwave you walk with some powdered milk some dried fruit because you still yeah. want um you still want your oats to be tasty Correct. right some dried fruit and some oat and you put it in the microwave and you make it Oh, the, the oats alone is complex carbs, so it's going to be rich in fiber. The dried fruit gives you a little bit of sweetness, but it's also even more complex carbohydrate. The milk is a good, good source of protein, so you're going yeah. to have the necessary satiety from the protein to keep you until morning. And you yeah. have a decent cup of cereal 2 a.m. in the morning, as opposed to going to get something fried or fried, because at or 2 a.m., Yes. The only thing you're going to get is is bravery. Mm -hmm. that, so you that do is some fantastic. serious. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. We have oh. another another viewer who's asking another very in question, uh, interesting question. Hi. Jace. Hi, Jace. Um, Jace is asking about coffee. And he says, you know, many people have different views on it. Can you tell me how healthy or how nutritious is coffee? Now, coffee is a good source of anti antioxidants. Um, caffeine, though, could suppress your appetite a bit, yeah. right? But for some people, it's their daily, um, they need it for a daily wake up. So again, it has to do with the quantity. Um, recommended maybe two teaspoons a day is actually recommended if you are drinking caffeinated coffee, normal coffee. Decaf, you can have a little more because again, the caffeine would have been um, taken out of it. So it is, uh, it's okay in certain quantities. Again, nutrition has to do with frequency or amount. So yes, it can be incorporated into the diet, but we trainees like to go Starbucks, right? Mm -hmm. And claim that we drink in coffee first thing in the morning and it's a chai latte, this, that, and the other with sugar. Yes. That's where the problem generally comes in. If you're doing hot milk with coffee, that's fine. But we trainees love condensed milk. And that's where we tend to fall down. But it's okay. It's a it's a good source again of antioxidants. So it can be incorporated into the diet and be pretty safe. Yes. Yeah? If you are hypertensive though, I would tell you that you may need to lean on the decaffeinated version of it. Yeah? Thank you. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Good. I see nobody didn't ask me about my low fat milk, so I'll leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> Not full cream. Low fat. Who's supposed to be taking in full cream milk? Anybody under 10. Uh, yeah. Th that's, that's, I, that's news to me. Mm-hmm. Children, majority of their calories come from fat. So higher the fat intake as a child, better or for you. When you start to get older, that's where the problem comes in. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Good. Nice. Good. Carbohydrate guidelines. Reduce your sugar cravings by eating adequate complex carbs. So that goes back to your oats, 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Satisfy your sweet tooth with fresh fruit or dried fruit. No, the sweet tooth that kicks in about two, three o'clock in the evening. Yeah? The nuts could work. A little bit of yogurt could work. A little bit of dried fruit could work. Yeah? Not the 
chocolate coated cookie. Yeah. Mm. Limit your refined sugar intake to 30 grams or less per day. This does not apply. This 30 grams does not apply to fresh fruit, which is naturally occurring sugar. Good. Nice. This is where this slide here comes into play with your, remember, one teaspoon of sugar is four grams. So, world, I want you to go and check some of your favorite beverages <laughs> and divide the sugar on the label by four. So, I took away the Coca-Cola because I wanted everybody. That's the normal um, go-to thing. Good? So, I want everybody. This slide is your homework. This slide is go and see your favorite drink in the world. And divide the sugar by four. And this is what I tell my patients. If you, if I could make a cup of tea for you and put that amount of sugar in it and you drink mm. it, go right ahead and have the drink. I'm sure you will never be able to. Mm -hmm. mm. Perfect example. Coca-Cola has approximately a 20 ounce, has approximately, I think, 54 grams of sugar. Wow. That comes up to about 16 and a half teaspoons of sugar. Jeez. Stacey, could I make you a cup of coffee and put Never. 16 and a half teaspoons of sugar Never. in it? Never. Never. Wow. And you know what, what, what they're good at is that, you know, people say, well, it's not tasting sweet. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. But it doesn't God. take away the fact that it is there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 And again, that's why I call the Moby and, and Christmas is coming. Moby and Sorrel. I, I make this joke. Technically, Moby and Sorrel is not even juice. Juice <laughs> is fruit base. Moby is a bark and Sorrel is a flower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's mm. a reality check. <laughs> yes. And you see those two things, especially Sorrel. My dad has this saying, it is put sugar for it to taste okay, and then more sugar for it to taste good. Good. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's so mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you don't put enough sugar in the soil, it tastes kind of brackish. Kind of brackish. So then you have to put some more. Yes. And then you have to put a little more. Then a little more, and then you, you get it. It's just right. It's the same thing with Morby. Mm. So in a nutshell... You're literally drinking flavored bath water and flavored flower water. <laughs> I'm sorry, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm sorry. Tell us I'm the sorry. truth. We need the truth. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sorry. If you want to drink your 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 your, your flavored flower water, <laughs> but I will tell you this: when you're making your sorrel, measure how much sugar you're putting in again. Yeah. Divide that number by four and tell me if it would it, especially to my diabetic patients. Yes. I'm being yes. very honest with you. It is not worth it. I will tell you this in my practice, your HbA1c, that is your 90-day average of your blood sugar. Yeah? You see, come mm. February, everybody HbA1c over what it should be. You know yeah. why? So true. Because we drink the ginger beer, the puncha creme, the sorrel. Yeah. The ham, the lamb, the jam. Yeah. But I remember working working in San Fernando Gen. I don't know if it's the same now. While I worked at San Fernando Gen, we had most diabetic admissions just after oh. Christmas yes. and just yes. after carnival. Uh, carnival. Yeah, yes. because of the alcohol yep. intake. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same <laughs> thing. When I worked at Eric Williams, it was the same thing. Yeah. Yes. Post- and remember, your, 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 your A1C is your three-month average. It's 90 days. So yeah. if Christmas time, you overdo it for a two-week period, that is going to ultimately affect your A1C when you yeah. go back to your doctor around carnival time to check to see what happened. And that's when you get a lot of the amputations, right? Correct. Because persons would have ignored 
all the signs and symptoms that yeah. things are going wrong with their bodies. Yeah. Because again, Christmas time tends to be a time of excess for us as Trinidadians. And as a diabetic, I am not telling you not to indulge, but I'm telling you that you indulge, but you take your medication as prescribed. Yeah. Please don't be doctor kill patient, right? <laughs> and you decide, yes. nah, not today. Or get up on my blood sugar was low, so I didn't bother, yes. right? You have to eat properly, take your medication, and exercise. Remember these oh. people. We spoke about some of this on the last episode. Do not be your own doctor. Well, I'm feeling all right. I have to take the medication today. Tracy exactly. is saying it again. We did not have a discussion about this before. The reality is eat well, exercise, take your medication. And if there's a change, discuss it with your doctor first before you self-medicate yes. or under-medicate. All right? Very, yes. very important, folks. Very important. Very, very important. Yeah, because we get a lot of them who say, no, when I woke up this morning, my blood sugar was 80, so I didn't bother to take it. Right. And what's going to happen after you eat breakfast? And then breakfast time, you eat and you're drinking a glass of sorrel, right? You make a white bread and ham sandwich because it's Christmas morning. And with then... Chow -chow. With chow oh, With chow chow. <laughs> with chow chow. Let's not forget epic chow chow, right? And then come 12 o'clock, your blood sugar is 300 and you're in shock. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now remember, again, your A1C, that 300 spike is going to affect your average. Yeah. And if you have, let's say in a 90-day period, you have 30 of those, those spikes, your A1C is going to be far over the limit. I have yes. had patients who came to me with an A1C of 5.1 and post-Christmas, it was 8 yeah 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 and the reality is i'm not telling you not to indulge but we need to smart indulge yes yeah my dad has a saying when you're eating ice cream you look for the ice cream without debris what does he mean the chocolate swirls the nuts mm -hmm. the sprinkles you get a plain ice cream Bryas has an excellent no added sugar ice cream. It's 110 right. calories in a half wow. cup. That is sufficient. Sufficient. What, what brand it is, is that? Sufficient. Bryas. I'm writing it down, people. This may be a giveaway in the next episode. <laughs> Bryas ice cream. Bryas ice cream, the plain vanilla. It has 110 calories in four ounces, which is a half cup. If it is you want to do something like that, providing you um, eat properly, take your medication and exercise, that's fine. That is fine. But you cannot do the, the, the prerequisite things and then want to sit down with a basin of the ice cream and yeah. don't be surprised that your blood sugar is going to reflect what you have done for the day. day. Somebody has asked my a, uh, mm -hmm. an interesting question here about smoothie mixing. Ooh. What, what, what are your thoughts on smoothie mixing? Ooh, because smoothie. everybody is going on these, these diets. Thanks, Shade, right. for this question. Smoothies, I have a awful, awful relationship with smoothies. Why? Liquid calories are always something to be very cautious of. In the hospital, if it is we need you to gain weight, liquid calories become our go-to. Why? Yes. I can blend a lot more and put it in a cup with a straw and get you to drink that. If I if I put these, the same amount of fruit in front of you and tell you, well, you'll have to eat it, chances are you're going to struggle. Right? Yes. So liquid calories are something you have to be very cautious with. Again, we trainees making smoothies with more fruit than anything else. Mm -hmm. So I have had my diabetic patients who go price smart and buy the bag of frozen fruit. Yes. And it's fruit with a dollop of, of Greek yogurt. And everybody's walking around the place thinking they're healthy. And then at the end of the day, the blood sugar is um, 250 and it should be 100. Wow. Why? Liquid calories. Liquid calories. If you use the measurement on the back of the, 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 the 
the, the label is only about half cup. If you mix half cup with some yogurt, you will literally get about that. I'm wow. sure we're not doing that. And again, if it is you want to do a smoothie, a smoothie is a good way for you to get in a vegetable. I have some people who just don't want to eat a vegetable, but I can yes. drink it. You blend your veg with a hint of fruit, not the other way around. Yes. Not a, a, a fruit with a hint of vegetable. Yeah? My former um, supervisor was a green juice champion. Pain, <laughs> spinach, and a green apple. I didn't know how she used to drink it, but she used to drink it. Why? It's a good way of increasing your fiber intake, getting in your mm -hmm. vegetables, getting yes. in your vitamins. But again, we must be cautious with liquid calories. Yes. Take your time when it is you're making your smoothies. And I will tell you this, always measure the pour. Yes. I ask my patients, how much oats you put in that? I don't know. I just pour oats. So you don't know. Yeah. yeah. And when I tell you, go back and measure, you'll come back and tell me, oh my gosh, I was putting close to three quarter cup of oats in the smoothie. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? So if you're doing a smoothie, make sure and measure. Get a tablespoon. Don't cross four tablespoons of oats in anything. Yeah? No more. I'm writing this down because I usually put about half a cup. <laughs> Mm -hmm. A quarter cup is about four tablespoons. Don't cross. Why? Two tablespoons of dried cereal is actually a serving. And generally, we need two slices of bread. So the two slices of bread would be yeah. equivalent to four tablespoons of oats. So let's yeah. try not to cross four, right? When it is we use in something like oats. So we do wow. oats, maybe half a banana. Yeah, you're throwing on a vegetable that it's palatable. In a smoothie with some Greek yogurt or some low fat milk, and you blend wow. it, that's fine. That's a Fantastic. meal, though. That's a meal, yes. That's a meal. Great. Mm -hmm. We have any more questions? Um, I'm seeing one, another one, very interesting one as well. Let's turn the viewers today um, on a roll. How safe is stevia Ma from Marshall Forrester? And I think many diabetics, um, especially in the earlies, they mm -hmm. use substitutes. So the stevias and all the other substitutes. How safe is it, for, especially for a diabetic? Thanks for the question, Marsha. Thanks, Marsha. That's a good question, though. Um, again love-hate relationship with a sugar substitute. <laughs> um, I, I generally ask my patients to do their research. I don't want to tell you that something is good or not good. Um, yeah. We always do a, a, a cost-benefit analysis. Yeah? Yeah. Um, when we come to, what I tell, generally tell my patients in practice is, if it is you love sugar and you're now trying to wean yourself off of it, Fine, use a sugar substitute for now. For now. But we have to come to the point where you could drink a cup of tea without um without sugar. One one little trick yeah. that may serve you well. Use powdered milk in your beverages. Mm. Um why powdered milk? Powdered milk thickens anything. Something thicker generally tastes sweeter to the tongue. And you'll ah. find when you use powdered milk. Right? Even if you use a pack of stevia or splendid, splendor, splendid, splendor, what do you call it? Splendid. Yeah, I think it's splendor, splendor. yeah. Splendor. I think it's a splendor, right? yeah. You wouldn't be able to use you wouldn't be able to use the entire packet once you put powdered milk in it because the lactase in the milk gives you a level of sweetness. So wow, try to cut your beverage with with powdered milk. Now, when you use any powdered milk, make a, a slurry first. When I'm near slurry, right. you add a little bit of water to it, um, room temperature water, and then you gradually add the hot water to it because you don't want to cook the um, milk protein too quickly because you'll get lumps. Wow. I love yeah? these tips, though. They're really practical information. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
We have so one or two other questions that we will ask as we as we go along. Okay, good. Yeah. So we're going back to the servants, the amount of sugar. You will realize that um, you will find, I, I always tell my patients, you see when you're diabetic, you're on a food diet. When I say a food diet, food, food. Very rare would you open a pack and eat something from it. Yeah? One of the one of the snacks I should have put in on your mid-afternoon. Well, when we were younger, we call it chow, and when we get older, we call it salad. Yeah? <laughs> So we are custom with the shadow any and the garlic. And then when we got bigger, you know, we have garlic infused oil with um cilantro. Mm -hmm. Yes. Still shadow any and garlic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. We, we, younger, we've gotten older, you know, it's it's salad, you know? Good. Make a bowl of chow and put it in the fridge. A little pomsi a little cucumber. Put it in the fridge. Yeah. So you're mid-afternoon, right? If you don't want to do the nuts, you do a little chow. And you sit down and you eat it. You do a little pineapple and cucumber. Yeah? As opposed to um, looking for um, something from a pack. Now, why I tell you the chow? Chow basically curbs um, whatever craving you have. Um, the fruit, the sweetness of the fruit deals with the sugar aspect of it. And the pepper and the salt deals with the savory aspect of it. So together, they make a perfect combination. Popcorn is also a good alternative in the mid-afternoon because it's the same thing. You get carbohydrates and then you get the salt. Right. It, it kind of keeps everything under control. Right. Yeah? Good. And and I know I know people talk about with the popcorn. Um, they use popcorn, but they buy a lot of the popcorn that's buttered or they add a lot of, a lot of right. butter. So yeah. the popcorn I'm talking about is the hardwood popcorn from childhood, <laughs> right? Where you put a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pot with some salt and you mix it around a little bit and you yeah. drop in the colors, you cover it and you stand up and you watch the popcorn pop. Because it's just sheer excitement. So we're going to old popcorn pop in the pot. And the popcorn, popcorn tastes popcorn. better anyway. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The lovers and the... There's one that I ate and I, I swore it tastes like soap powder. Just kind of roll around your mouth. Just roll around your mouth. I, I don't understand. Just roll around your mouth. Like if you want to come out like soap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. The popcorn I'm talking about is old-fashioned popcorn. Again, yes. like chow. Yes. Now it's salad. Before it was popcorn. Now it's, oh my God, it's the kernel and the packet on the right. Not all sophisticated. The popcorn I'm talking about is old-fashioned popcorn. Yeah? That's right. Yes. Good. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's round up. Complex carbs over simple. Reduce our sugar intake. The sugar I'm talking about is the added sugar. Exercise. Cheapest form of exercise is walking. Walking. Mm-hmm. If it is you, you have space in the living room and you have a smart TV, feel free to go online and pull up some exercise um, program. There's things called Tabatas. If, if, if you're brave, try a Tabata. Yeah. If you're brave. If you're brave. Right? Billy Blank still operating. Just <laughs> get some form of activity in. I yeah. always remember I heard Stacy do a, a lecture. And she said exercise is movement with purpose. That's right. You don't just move. You yeah. move with purpose. So, so, so many patients tell me, well, I, I wash clothes today and I hang them out and that's exercise. That's physical activity. That is mm -hmm. just using up energy. But to yes. exercise, it has to be purposeful. It has to be repetitive. Yes. 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 Yeah. And of course, balance your intake. When I say balance your mm -hmm. intake, not focusing on just one specific food group. We're trying to get yeah. all in. We want some legumes. We want some healthy fats. Yeah. We want some milk. We want some protein. We want some good carbs, yeah. some good veg, and some fruit. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Fantastic. Good. So remember homework. Any beverage you love to drink, read the label, find the sugar, divide it by four. If you could drink a cup of coffee, with that sugar in it, Feel free to have it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. Tracy, thank you so very 
much. Let me tell you, I have learned so much myself as a clinician, and I'm sure all of us have learned quite a lot. And I have one or two other questions for you. Mm -hmm. um, just to remind persons, just to remind persons that I have a special today for those of you who ask questions, not only on this feed, but I have to check some of the other feeds as well, that the Kitchen Garden has sponsored a variety veggie bag that consists of tomatoes, cucumbers, straight up to okra, hot pepper. It's a bag valued at almost $250 just for one of our um, viewers who have asked a question because you know the only way we're going to learn the only way we're going to grow is by asking so yes. thank you so much um for for all that you presented i mean not just what you're what is summarized but some of the tips there's sometimes very simple ways that we can overcome certain hurdles that we think are so, oh God, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? You know, I just love, especially with Christmas coming, if we want to drink sugar down tree bark <laughs> or sugar down flower petals, go ahead and have the Moby and Sorrel. There are other healthier ways and tastier ways that we could enjoy Christmas. Um, reading the labels, I mean, be careful with the smoothies, everybody juicing. But we have to remember it's vegetables with a hint of fruit as opposed to fruits with a hint of vegetables. Hint of vegetables. Yeah. So, that, I mean, all of those tips, so, so fantastic. But somebody, another um, viewer asked Savita Ram Logan. Hi, Savita. She also wanted Hi. to know, Tracy, if she can get your um, presentation. Um, so, she can get my I, I will. We'll, your, she wanted to know if your presentation could be emailed to her. So what I what yeah, so she's willing to do that. Um Savita, I just realized who is this Savita. I know Savita very well. Uh so Savita will email it <laughs> to you. Um, but a fantastic question is glycemic index guidelines recommended? And we hear a lot about that with a lot of the diets. For example, the South Beach diet talks a lot about the glycemic index. Is that a good guideline for the diabetics? Right, so the glycemic index is how quickly a particular food will raise your sugar. Yeah, so again, we're going right back to complex and simple carbs. That's all that it really is. How quickly a particular food is going to raise your blood sugar. Um, over the years, rice and potato has been vilified for God knows why. I don't understand, <laughs> right? But um, culturally, I as a dietitian, I don't tell my patients who make rice from their diet. Why? It's yeah. part and parcel of who makes us. That's Trinidadian food. A pilau. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't tell anybody not to eat pilau. What I would tell you is use your rice, use your peas, get your veggies in, and have a nice salad with your food. Yes. Yeah? Good. I would tell you if you're using potato, let's try not to use the potato um, as is. You get your carrots in. Your... I tell my patients, if you're doing potato salad, have more peas and carrot than potato. Yes. Yeah? So you're still getting that fullness. You're still getting that that flavor in your mouth, but the balance. Right. And you mentioned that balance. over and over, that balance. Yes. Yeah? The glycemic index is not for everyone. I have patients who are very good at it. And then yeah. the average person, it confuses them. I will yeah. tell you, stay to your complex carbohydrate um, side of the spectrum as it relates to carbs. Try to yeah. limit your refined, your simple carbs, and you should be okay. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks yeah. so much for answering, Savita. I'm sure she answered your question thoroughly. Um, but we would be sharing Tracy's contact information so that all of us, all of you can contact her for a consultation at her place of work um, for a more in-depth look at your diet and to see how it could be shaped. Because this is not a dietitian who just going to hand you here, look at diet sheet. No, no. She's going to work Ooh. with you on that journey because it's yes. a journey. It's, it's about change, making certain changes, getting certain habits um, in gear. So Tracy is, is willing to work with any of you. So we will yes. share her contact information shortly. Um, Grace Herman has asked if you can give a good dinner option for a diabetic. Um, again, the question I will ask is what time you're going to eat this dinner? 
I, I, ideally, I want you to eat at dinner maybe two to three hours before you go to bed. Um, again, um, in the afternoon, if you look back, you'll see I asked for bran flakes. Again, it has to do with fiber. You want a yeah. good source of fiber. Culturally, um, dinner will either look like lunch or look like breakfast. So yeah. you could still go back and eat your cassava and your stew peas and your chicken. If you want to, you omit the peas and eat the cassava <laughs> and the chicken with the salad. Mm -hmm. But if you still have a little bit of so, your whole grain powder and your tomato choker with salt, you should eat that also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so it really is about your availability. Plan. It's about you, what exactly. you have available. I don't when I when I do a meal plan for a patient, my I don't want your lifestyle to fit into my meal plan. My meal plan yes. should fit into your lifestyle. Yeah. 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 And if you're and you're thinking you sometimes correct. How do we make it more nutritious? And again, yes. something you mentioned with regards to that that difference between healthy and nutritious, and there's a nutritious. difference that just yes, you know context. just literally blew my mind that I never considered. And this is so much better for me. Um, and even in the words that I use when treating a patient. And and I think even as clinicians, we need to get on board with the difference yes. between healthy mm -hmm. and nutritious. And and thank you yeah. for that. And I'm actually going to talk to you more. An idea just popped into my head around that about educating us. We need that education because our language needs to transcend to our change. patients. And, yes. and we didn't know that. And I, I didn't know it. I know many people didn't know it. Grace Silman has said thanks so much for answering okay, as well as Savita. Um, Jace, Jace has one, another question, and we after Jace, we may just have time. And to I watch. think I know who Jace is. Hi, Jace. <laughs> <laughs> I watch my voice like gold, you know. Yes, 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 uh, yes. I know you. His, his cousins mm -hmm. and yeah, his family. Yeah, is very talented. Mm -hmm. And of course, from point fourteen, I'm bringing up my people from point the Saint Hilaire brothers. So thanks, Jace, yes. for being part. He has mm -hmm. another question. Do you recommend? Oh, this is a nice one. That these keto diets that are becoming popular. What do, what would you say about these these diets? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm sure there's at least one person on this on this live who is doing the keto diet right now. Listen, Fantastic question. I've had I, I get this question all the time. I I, I get the keto for cancer, <laughs> keto for yeah. weight loss, keto for diabetes. The truth of the matter is we weren't designed to do that. <laughs> we weren't designed to live on carbs and fat. We won't. The brain prefers carbohydrates as its first source of energy. Um, we have stored, um, I don't want to say carbohydrate, we have stored glycogen in our muscles. The keto diet it's just every every so often, and Stacey, you would know this, every so often we get yeah. a, a new face of our old diet. That's right. Um, this is a fad diet. Fad diets are supposed to be quick. They generally are not nutritious. They are for um, short periods of time. They are not lifestyle changes. Anything yeah. that tells you omit one thing, one specific food group, to achieve weight loss. And this is something that, the question I ask my patients who on, who want to do fat diets: When is a fat diet not one fair to lose weight? Hmm. Okay. Do they have those? A fat diet is always designed as a quick fix yeah. around um, yeah. a lifestyle change. So whether it be keto, whether it be South Beach, whether it be Atkins, and again, all these are just reports of the Atkins diet. Whether it be yeah. the Mediterranean, they're always designed for you to lose weight. They're not designed for you to live a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Because humans are not designed to not eat carbs. Yeah. <laughs> We're not. Stacy We're not. Sergio saying, Stacy, I just asked, is it safe for diabetics and regulating blood sugar? But I think you've answered that basically in saying that it is not built. Um, it's built for us just to lose weight, but it's not thinking about health. So I can give an analogy. Yeah, and I could give an analogy to that, for example, for persons who smoke. Years ago, a lot of people smoked because it reduced their appetite. So, yes, it reduced their appetite, you lost weight, but is smoking healthy? And, of course, the answer is no. So, we're exactly. looking now at our lifestyle changes, not just to, to lose weight, but rather so to live a healthy life.
and yes. th there are diabetics who are skinny like my finger yes they have not an extra ounce of fat and they're mm -hmm. type 2 diabetic but they mm -hmm. have been living unhealthy lives so you want us to to wrap our brains around not necessarily dieting for a quick fix but changing our habits for, for a healthy lifestyle yes and i just have one last question and this is also sure. from stacy ann um if that's okay trace the yeah, last sure. question for the night guys remember if you have any other questions we're gonna get to it email us at backinmotiontt at yahoo.com and look out at our page and we will be answering our questions over the next couple of weeks all right yes. um mm -hmm. for the final question for the night stacy has asked mm -hmm. can you explain resistant starches and is this good for diabetics resistant i'm not too sure stacy if you're still on can you what um what do you mean when you talk about resistant starches um i know a lot of i think is it complex the complex carbs which I, are the I, suspect, I suspect it's a complex carbs she's right. talking about yeah mm -hmm. yeah i suspect that's it mm -hmm. what is it she wanted to know about it so she wanted to know um are these good for diabetics these are the these are the carbohydrates for diabetics that's right yeah not the simple yeah. ones the one, complex one, one side note um um we always believe that bread should be for breakfast don't know where we got that from there is no problem yeah. eating provision on salt for six o'clock in the morning eh? yes correct and stacy just Nothing asked about that she asked about figs green fig and yes, oh, yes. <laughs> eat, eat a green fig and salt fish first thing in the morning, six o'clock, which a yep. cup of coffee. I guarantee you, your blood sugar is going to be better controlled. Correct. And if you eat a sandwich, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So, so we don't. I have know to we have. The box. Sorry, Tracy. Go ahead. No, we don't have to stick within the, the the box of bread must be for breakfast. You can have food for breakfast. When I work, when I where Correct. I used to work, I used to eat pale out six o'clock in the morning because it would keep me full or longer. I always say bread doesn't right. make sense when you can eat green fig. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had to put this up from Glenda Carty. We know you remember Glenda. Hi, Glenda. So Glenda was on even on our first episode. So thank you for the support. And thank you to everybody who has been on. Um I remember we are saying that this is a journey that we have to take together yes and it is about healthy lifestyle changes it's not it's not about the fads and the quick fixes, quick fixes. all right it's about doing those necessary changes having those teething issues to get to where we want to be and i want to share um, tracy's email with you um mm -hmm. so that if you desire meeting with her i recommend highly she is such a practical dietitian and as she said she doesn't fit into the mold what she does is create a plan that is designed for your lifestyle for your goals for what you have access to and to guide you on that journey so please email her the email is up on the screen you can also email us at backinmotiontt at yahoo.com uh, for any other questions that you have. I wish we could stay longer. Um, Savita says, um, such a bubbly, I love this bubbly dietitian. And watch my Savita, <laughs> yes, you know, forget. Trust me. Because if you go for a consultation with Tracy, that will end up being your lifelong, your lifelong friend. So I again I thank thank all of you all of you for being here for staying the course for just over an hour with us it has been fantastic we have learned so much i'm saying we because this is a journey for all of us we have learned so much we continue to learn to ensure that we live healthier lives and that we continue living well with diabetes so yes until next episode episode three which will be this thursday at 6 30 p.m right here live on facebook tune in we are going to have another fantastic guest dr deborah bartholomew and i'm just thinking that after this all of us need to get together tracy i mean you're gonna love yes. dr bartholomew deborah is a live wire just like you so we're excited <laughs> she is our expert ophthalmologist so for all diabetics non-diabetics yes. you need to tune in 
one of the leading causes of blindness in Trinidad and Tobago is diabetes. And sometimes when we catch ourselves that there's a problem, it's often very, very late and we can prevent a number of these um, issues and complications. So again, job well done as expected, Miss Jackson Rizwain. And it was a pleasure and we will be in touch with you on the yes. next episode of Real Time with Dr. Stacy. So bye guys, be safe until next Thursday. Take care. Not getting your health and wellness questions answered at your doctor's office? Are you ready to take control of your health and well-being? Do you want the proper tools to set you on your wellness journey? Do you want to meet and chat with expert members of the healthcare team? Well, step into real time with Dr. Stacy. Hi, I'm Dr. Stacy DeGale, your personal physiotherapist and wellness consultant who wants to make sure that you live your best life. We'll be chatting with wellness team members and inviting you as you are the center of that team. And we'll be doing all of this while you are in the comfort of your own home or office. Join me in real time with Dr. Stacy as we discuss everything health and everything wellness.